Disability in the Land, Episode 4, Rec to Connect. Hello and welcome to Disability in the Land, the monthly podcast from ADA Cleveland. I'm your host, Mara Lane. Joining us here today is Jen Knott, Executive Director and Founder of Rec to Connect. Rec to Connect was founded in 2009 and connects people with special needs to community recreation, wellness, and lifetime leisure skills through innovative recreation therapy programming. The staff at Rec to Connect are dedicated to promoting access to recreation and increasing community inclusion for people with special needs and their families to enhance their quality of life. Thank you for joining us today, Jen. Can you please introduce yourself to our listeners, including your role and its function? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be on and to be able to share more about Rec to Connect and ADA Cleveland as well. Um, so as Mara said, I'm Jen Nott. I'm the executive director and founder um, of Rec to Connect, graduate of Kent State University um, and a certified recreation or therapeutic recreation specialist, or in other words, a recreation therapist. Uh, I wear many, many hats at Rec to Connect um, and continue to add more daily. Um, so today I get to add podcaster to that, uh, that role, which is awesome. Um, but I do, I manage and oversee all of the operations of the organization, including organizational structure, budgeting, grant writing, programming, staffing, training, um, staff development, fundraising, donor stewardship, marketing, uh, relationship building in the community, um, and then also pursuing new opportunities for growth and service to people with disabilities through Rec to Connect. Wow, it sounds like you do wear a lot of hats. And you know what? I'm also a proud graduate of Kent State University. That's awesome. <laughs> Tell us more about your background. How did you begin doing the work that you do? Um, so growing up, I had a cousin who had autism um, and saw the struggles that my aunt and uncle experienced on a daily basis, trying to find quality services for him within the community. Um, and a lot of times it, it ended up being them not finding those services. Um, and then kind of leading throughout high school and grade school, we had a lot of volunteer opportunities that I was able to engage with people with disabilities in different recreation settings. Um, and then when deciding what I wanted to major in in college, I thought pre-med was going to be my way to go. I loved working with children. Um, I loved the clinical aspect of potentially working in a hospital. Um, and so that kind of is where I thought I should belong. Um, then quickly realized that was not, uh, not for me. Um, but I still kind of wanted to follow along with working with kids. Um, and my mom saw an article in the Kent Stater, um, which was like the newspaper there. Um, about recreation therapy. And um, I played soccer at Kent um, and had played sports all my life. So it kind of combined that love of sport also with that clinical um, need that I, I wanted to fulfill as well. So that kind of was what led me into recreation therapy. And I fell in love with it from day one and, and couldn't imagine myself anywhere else. Um, and now 22 years later, here, here's where it led me. So I'll be honest, Jen, I don't know what recreation therapy is. Can you give me a brief explanation? Absolutely. So, I mean, I, I feel like that is common. Most people, especially in Ohio, do not know what recreation therapy is. In other states, recreation therapy is part of everyday life. They're in parks and rec departments. Um, we're in hospitals. You know, we, we are a huge part of helping, especially in the community, people with disabilities access community recreation. Um, and in Ohio, unfortunately, we're just, we're behind in that in that realm. Um, so recreation therapy is something where we look at the individual as a whole. Um, we can work in a variety of settings. So we could work with people with disabilities. We could work in corrections. We could work in a psychiatric hospital. We could work with older adults, but trying to find a way to use leisure as the medium and recreation as our medium for service delivery to accomplish goals, whether it be physical goals, whether it be social goals, whether it be le just leisure related goals, and, and then help individuals achieve that. So it, it can combine, you know, from somebody who may have had an accident or an injury, if they had recreation participation prior to that accident or injury, how do we then help them get to a place where they can experience that maybe in a different way and an adapted way, but still have access to recreation as they go forward and then work on those skills and those goals, you know, throughout that process. Thank you so much for that explanation. It makes so much sense to me. And I'm constantly blown away about the resources that are available to Cleveland Clevelanders with disabilities. Are people with disabilities your main audience or can anybody participate in your programming? 
so people with disabilities are our main audience. Um, any any disability, um, if it's a physical disability, developmental, um, if they have cognitive needs, if they have psychological needs, um, or or maybe even undiagnosed um, with something, but the the other programming that is in the community may not be the best fit for them. And they're kind of looking for a different approach of how to engage in recreation. Two-sided answer, yes, primarily for people with disabilities, but we, we don't turn anyone away. It sounds like you have two sides almost of your programming, both physical and social. Do you feel like your participants gain more from the exercise or the socialization at Rec to Connect? I think it, it's a little bit of both. Um, from a physical standpoint, I feel like there are so many benefits that we can work on, whether it's range of motion, whether it's strengthening motor planning skills and, and being active as well. So finding an active, healthy leisure lifestyle that promotes that um, for our participants. Um, and it allows them to move their bodies in ways that they may not be able to do in other parts of their lives. I think the physical aspect is huge for what we do. Um, for a especially lifelong health promotion standpoint. But then I also think the socialization that comes from our group programs and our family events that provides that sense of connection and community is huge. The psychological benefits from the movement also coupled with the connection to others in the community help foster a positive experience in recreation. It helps get your endorphins flowing. Like it just all around is a feel good moment that makes people wanna continue to come back for more. And I think I love that we can help families connect with, uh, with each other, help siblings meet other siblings, help people with disabilities grow and cultivate their friendships with peers in their community. And so I think that there's, there's, there's both. I don't know that one is better than the other because I think both are just as valuable as the other. Wow. And how many individuals and families are you helping connect right now? Um, so we have around 200 individuals weekly in our programs. We have special events that we do, like our family events, um, that we go out into the community and have pool parties, or we go to Guardians games, or our next one coming up is an ice skating party. Um, you know, so that adds to the amount of individuals that we see on a monthly basis, but weekly in either one-on-one -on -one or group programming, we're around 200 on a weekly basis. Speaking of special events, you're the founder of Rec to Connect. And you've obviously seen the evolution of your organization from start to the present. In your opinion, what has Rec to Connect done that has made the most impact on your community? I think the most that we've done has been able to expand recreation opportunities in Northeast Ohio for people with disabilities. Um, I know when I started Rec to Connect in 2009, and even thinking back to when, when my cousin was growing up, there really were very limited options for where do I go to learn how to swim? Where do I go to play soccer? Where do I go, you know, to meet other families and do these things? Um, so I think we have really expanded our reach by offering programming in Beechwood, Seven Hills, Berea, North Olmstead, and Akron to kind of encompass all surrounding areas uh, in Northeast Ohio. And then we continue to identify the barriers that people with disabilities and their families are facing and experiencing to help work to find solutions to make recreation um, their recreation involvement more accessible and more inclusive. It sounds like you have something for everybody. Are there specific programs going on right now that ADA Cleveland community members can join in on? We do. So weekly, um, we have programs that are running all year round. We don't necessarily, you know, start and stop during certain times. Um, but we have aquatic therapy. We have adapted aquatics. Um, we have our Razor Sharks USA swim team that practices three times a week, and then they also compete um, in USA swim meets throughout the year. And that's like a fully inclusive environment as well. So, I mean, we're competing not just, you know, in our own swim meets with our, our own participants. We're competing with all other community members um, of all ages from, you know, sev ages seven all the way through adulthood. Um, we have a master swim team that's for individuals ages 18 and up. And with that swim team, our coaches actually swim with them too. So we, they do relays together. They, they compete against each other. So that, that is happening on a monthly basis. Um, our hike club, they meet in the Metro parks and hike together once a week. Um, we have our fit friends. We have cardio drumming. We have a class called paddle power that we just started. That's a spin class. Um, we have a bike connect program where we teach children and adults how to ride bike, uh, how to ride bikes. Um, and then we have family recreation events and then partnerships with area schools and adult day programs. And in those programs, we provide recreation therapy and aquatic therapy either at the school or they come to our rec centers. 
and we provide it there. Uh, we're expanding our outdoor programming with the Metro Park. So we're starting to work on kayaking and some other outdoor recreation events with them. And then we also are offering an adult social club um, so that we can have monthly meetings where everybody gets together to just have fun. It sounds like aquatics is a really big part of your programming. When I started Rec to Connect, it was just with aquatics. Um, and then it's just grown and, and fostered into where it is today. That's so beautiful. And I'm sure that you know then that May is National Drowning Prevention Month. Does Rec to Connect teach water safety as part of its aquatic programming? We do. We do. So our aquatics program is, like you said, a huge part of what we do. It's the majority of what we provide. Um, and we always, every month, every moment of what we do is trying to promote that safety in and around water. Um, according to the National Drowning Prevention Alliance, 70% of childhood drownings occur during non-swim times. Um, so many children are drawn to the water, but lack that safety awareness and skills to engage safely without parent supervision at all times. Um, and so we really try to provide as many swim safety techniques and tools to our participants and to our parents during our sessions. Um, we created swim levels. So we start with that very basic swim safety skills of floating on our back, blowing bubbles, finding the side of the pool, being able to walk our hands to a safe location, um, learning how to enter and exit the water safely, um, and then also never going underwater or near water without an adult. Um, so we'll be providing specific tools, tips for parents and caregivers um, to use while they're, especially with summer coming along, um, the chances of being around water increase that much more. Um, so we want to be able to provide as many tips and tricks as we can of how to be safe in the water. As we wrap up, we always ask this question of our guests. As a member organization of ADA Cleveland, how will Rec to Connect continue to forward the mission of ADA Cleveland this upcoming year? I think the biggest thing that we do to celebrate um, individuals with disabilities is by, by providing those continued experiences and uh, increased opportunity and access to community recreation um, in, in the communities that our individuals live in. Um, through our community partners, we try to engage the people in those spaces with our participants. Uh, they get to see and celebrate the successes as we go forward. Um, so we try to bring attention to that. Um, and then we also offer training for rec staff at community rec centers so that they can understand how they can be more inclusive in their programs and practices as well. Um, we speak on a regular basis to a variety of organizations uh, to further understanding on how to decrease some of those barriers in community rec um, and how we all can just kind of be a partner in that. Um, Thank you so much for joining us today, Jen, and sharing all of that work to connect with our listeners. We really appreciate having you here. Uh, thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. I appreciate it. You've been listening to Disability in the Land, an ADA Cleveland production. I'm your host, Mara Lane. Special thanks to our guest, Jen Knott of Rec to Connect. You can find Rec to Connect on their website, rectoconnect.org. That's R E C, the number two, connect.org. Or on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Rec to Connect Foundation. ASL interpretation is from Cleveland Hearing and Speech Center. Disability in the Land is produced by Emily Hastings, with production administration from Lori Kowalski. Marketing from Maria Sybertson, script coordination from Mike Hammer, and sound and video technical production from Mara Lane. That's me. Stay connected to ADA Cleveland by liking us on Facebook or following us on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at A-D-A-I-N-C-L-E. That's at A-D-A in CLE or visit our website, adacleveland.org, for a full video, transcript, and ASL interpretation of this podcast. Have a question or comment? We would love to hear from you. Send us an email to adainclee at gmail.com. We'll see you next time.